Paul Brothers, pleased to be joined once again by a friend of the show, Tristan Flynn from Jolly Tales. It's a pleasure to see you again, Good morning, sir. Paul. Hopefully you had a pretty good weekend. I did, yeah, nice weather. Okay, today, overreactive dogs, reactive dog training. Why don't you tell us first, Crystal asked before the break, what reactive dog training was all about, so why don't you tell us? So reactive dogs are dogs who bark and lunge unleash, usually at other dogs, but it could also be at people or at skateboards or cars. Mm -hmm. And so it's a big problem for people. People want to be able to enjoy a nice walk with their dog, but sometimes dogs are too stressed out and they're barking and lunging at things. So we need to find a training technique to solve that problem for people. Mm -hmm. Now, does this start somewhere in the puppy phase and goes right up through, or actually could happen to rescue dogs too? Or? That's right. So the technique we're going to show you today is something you can use as a preventative, even if your dog's not reactive, or if you happen to get a new rescue dog or a new puppy. It's something you should actually start right away. If okay. your dog is already reactive, the technique is a little harder, but it's certainly exactly the same, and you should use it with every dog. Okay. Now, before we get into it, we want to introduce our <laughs> special guest this morning. I've got a very good dog here. Who's this? Who's my dog? I can even pick up this guy. Look at this. What's his name? Well, we call him Reno at the store. He's one of our stuffed dogs we use for training. Okay. And using a stuffed dog in training can be helpful because if a dog is being exposed to a dog who maybe is a little aggressive or is reactive, it can be stressful for that dog. And, of course, we need a dog to work with. Yeah. So using a stuffed dog can be ethically sound to save the other dog from the stress. And when dogs are at distances, usually they will recognize this dog as being real. So we usually see the same reaction from a dog to another dog and also to the toy as well as long as they're at a distance. Now, right now, we know that she's going to know that's a toy, but right. that's okay. Okay, so we've introduced Reno, and who do we have here? This is Portia. She is a one-year-old Amstaff mix, so she is the pit bull, and she's very, very friendly. She is owned by um, one of my staff members, Jordan, so she rescued her as a puppy from the Nova Scotia SPCA. Portia, say good morning. I know. Look yeah. at that. Good girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a beautiful dog. Hey, how old is she? She is uh, going to be one in about 20 days. No way. Real soft ears, too. Okay, we only got a couple of minutes here, so why don't you get us into some uh, reactive dog uh, training here? So the first question is, what do we do when our dog sees another dog on a walk if they are barking and lunging? And so if we have our clicker, which is something that we talked about last time, yep. it allows the dog to know that when they hear the sound, they're going to get a treat. Now, if you don't have a clicker, you could praise the dog, mm -hmm. but the important part is making sure you have treats on you. So I always have my pouch with all my treats because I need it to condition the dog. I need the dog to learn that when they see other dogs, it's actually a good thing for them. Most people will pull up on the leash or yell at their dog when they're reactive, and unfortunately that makes it worse. Yeah. So the technique that I use is if you want to just move that dog around a little okay, bit. Hey, come on, Reno. So we kind of wait for Portia to look over. And as soon as she does, I'm going to click and treat her. So if you're out walking with your dog, as soon as your dog sees another dog on a walk, you want to mark it immediately before the dog has a chance to be reactive and reward them. Now, if she were to look back at the dog, we're simply going to click again. So if you just want to even move them a little bit, okay. she's really focused on my food, so she's not so interested in her toy. Well, she's well trained. And just move it right there. There. So as soon as she sees the dog, we're going to reward. Okay. And if you do that repetition over and over again, what you will start to find is that the dog will look at the other dog and look back at me. So she kind of just looked over at you right there, yeah. and then she looked back to me, so I rewarded her. And that becomes kind of step two in the process. Is once the dog is used to seeing other dogs and learning, hey, my handler gets really happy and rewards me, they will start looking to you for the reward when they see other dogs. And what we do is we essentially replace the barking and lunging behavior with simply looking up at the handler. And by using food that allows us to do it. Okay, and that, eventually the dog can be replaced with a skateboard or a vehicle driving by to kind of enhance the training? That's right. The key in the training is the distance. So if you have a dog who's incredibly reactive, you need to be at a distance where they're comfortable. So, for example, we wouldn't start reactive training this close if oh. our dog is reactive. You yeah. might be 100 feet away when we first start doing this training. And as the dog is more relaxed, we would move you closer and closer and closer until the dog is able to handle actual passes by. Okay. So distance is very, very important and lots of repetition. So if you do have a reactive dog, you <laughs> might... Yeah, good girl. <laughs> You might actually need to have a friend help you or have someone handle a different neutral dog so you can actually orchestrate a training environment and you can control the distance. The hardest thing for, for people handling their dog in the real world is that you don't control the other people. Right. So you have dogs jumping out of doors, you know, you have them coming up on the street and you're not expecting them. So walking can be quite hard. So you usually need a training session to get you started. Mm -hmm. But this technique will work on your walk. You just might need to use your distance. So if the dog's not ready to handle the distance, you might need to cross the street or move farther away in order to facilitate the training. Okay, we're up against it for time, but I do have a personal question that uh, we've kind of run into with our rescue dog, Cito. Yeah. Uh, a bit of a gross topic to talk about while you're eating breakfast on a Monday morning, but he seems to go for 
frozen poo all the time, Tristan. And is that a good or a bad thing? Uh, probably not good, right? I would say it's a fairly normal thing. Yeah. Um, it's certainly not something maybe you desire, no. but it's not very abnormal for the dog. I might look at altering their diet a little bit okay. and see if maybe that will make a difference. Um, but frozen poo is quite a delicacy to dogs. Is that okay? The other thing we can do is we can teach a leave it. And so we can teach a really, really reliable leave, leave it. And I'll show you a very quick technique. Okay. Come here, honey. Come on. So to teach leave it, what I do is I'll actually take something that Portia wants and I'll toss it out of her reach so she can't have that. And what I'm going to teach her is that when she gives up on that and turns and focuses to me, I'm going to click and reward her. And once she's very, very reliable at seeing the treat and turning away from it, then I can start to add the leave it cue. So I wouldn't say leave it until she's actually pretty good at going to the treat and coming back to me, and then I would add the leave it. So I want to teach her that even though you want that, if you leave that alone and come back to me, I'm going to give you a better reward. So okay. the dog actually wants to leave it instead of you kind of forcing them to, because again, most people would just kind of yell at their dog and pull up on yeah. the leash. And then as soon as they're off leash, they're going right for the poop again. Okay, I'll try that this afternoon with, uh, with the Cito boy. That's for sure. Tristan Flynn, thanks very much for coming in. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, where can people find out more information about classes and things? Jollytales.ca is the best way to reach us. And, of course, I do host the radio show on News yep. 95.7, Thursdays at 3. Excellent. Jollytales.ca for more information. It's Tristan Flynn from Jolly Tales here on the morning news. And also, he's all over social media, too, at Jollytales and at Tristan, C-P-D-T.